Hello everyone, Sprout here today, and well, I really didn't want to make this video because I felt like it was not my place to speak, but I keep getting multiple comments on this and messages about this, and so I guess I'll give my thoughts on it. These are my personal thoughts on this whole situation. So, I got, I don't know, about a month ago, something came up, and it was about someone named Toon Critic Y2K. Now, I am not heavy in the analyst community. I have heard about this individual, but the only analysts I really, you know, watch are Lightning Bliss, um, uh, Keyframe, Dr. Wolf, you know, those people. Just the analysts that you would expect to be, you know, big names in this community, but... <sighs> I really did not expect to find this out. I really thought this was just a hoax. But here's how I found out about this whole situation. Um, I was on Twitter one day, and I was just, uh, you know, browsing through my Twitter feed, and I came across a tweet by the Lost Narrator. And I, it was quote, it was a quoted tweet, and she basically said, you know, I have no words to, you know, describe this or something like that. And at first, I thought it was just a joke. Like, maybe she just got a good laugh out of it or something like that. And seeing it was a, you know, analysis video, I really thought that, you know, that was the case. But apparently not. So, I just keep going on with my day. And eventually, I come across, you know, more about this and much, much more. So... I'm starting to wonder, you know, what the hell is going on? So, eventually, I got a message from one of my subscribers and friends, and she, and, whoops, and he basically asked me, you know, have you heard about Toon Critic? And that's when I'm like, okay, what the hell is going on? So, I go to my Twitter feed, and courtesy of Whoopcake, she actually had the, you know, video linked on my Twitter feed. So I watch it, and immediately, I am completely and utterly disgusted. I'm disgusted, I'm shocked, I am completely speechless. Turns out, Toon Critic Y2K was found out as a pedophile. So, I, I had no, I, I, I mean, I thought it might have been a hoax, because seeing we do tend to get hoaxes in this fandom sometimes, like, you know, with episodes and all that stuff, maybe it was a hoax. But more and more videos, to, you know, start to pop up. So, I am just like, nope, this is a serious thing. And it, turn, it turns out, Toon Critic was having a relationship with a 14-year-old on t Skype, and he was having... He was in a role play with her, like a role play chat, and she was being, you know, he was asking her to do sexual things, like very explicit sexual things with him. You know, sending pics of her almost naked, and him sending pics of her with only his underwear on, and I was just like, what the actual fuck? You know, I was completely and utterly shocked by this. And I have seen the call video, like the actual Skype call where Josh Scorcher and British Ninja actually, you know, uh, confront him about this whole situation. And Toon treats it like it's absolutely no problem. Like, I have heard of Toon Critic in the past through, you know, analysis video. I've seen his, you know, his uh, OC, and but I didn't know anything about his past. I knew that he had gotten in trouble in the past and was very uh, notorious for getting in trouble. Like, he had make, made a lot of mistakes in the past. So, you know, but people make mistakes. And I was just, um, ugh. But this mistake is not a mistake. He knew exactly what he was doing. And in the entire call, he's not, you know, he doesn't care. All he cares about is his fame, his reputation, his, you know, his, his fame on YouTube. That's all he cares about. And that right there showed what kind of person he is. 
So after that, it, he doesn't take anything serious until we get to the point of, you know, uh, where things start to get serious. British Ninja even ends up calling him an asshole after he tells a bullshit story about him doing the same exact thing in the furry fandom. Basically, a 14-year-old girl basically tricked him by lying about her age. Yeah, right. And it ended up with the police being called and all that stuff. Okay. But British Ninja basically says, you know, okay, if you've done it in the past, then why the hell would you do this again? And he makes a solid point, and it doesn't make a lick of sense. Absolutely doesn't make any sense. And I agree. So it ends with basically Josh Scorcher and British Ninja saying, okay, so if he doesn't, you know, contact the police within 24 hours, they're going to do it no matter what. So he has to face his consequences, and they can no longer sweep this under the rug, which has been done multiple times. I didn't know the extent of this until I went and watched, you know, the stories that some of the victims had come out with. Like, some of the victims have posted videos telling their stories, and I was like, like, my jaw was dropping during some of these videos. I mean, but there's one that I watched that literally had me almost in tears. And I can't remember the name of the person who, you know, was affected. But to put it short and sweet, she was manipulated into a relationship by Toon Critic. Like, she met him as a friend, but in a Skype call where they were, you know, uh, just role-playing for fun, she they end up, you know, shaking their butt at the webcam. And he basically said that she had a nice ass, basically. And, yeah, they ended up getting into a relationship. Uh, and she was completely unaware of Toon Critic's actions. So, what happened was she ended up getting into a relationship with... with the, she ended up getting in a relationship with him where he then manipulated her into doing sexual acts. Even manipulating her into having sex with him at BronyCon. She also goes on to say that he was very controlling and very, very rude at some points. You know, and the fact is, after he broke up with her, she basically became a booty call girl. Which is someone you can just go to for sex, for fun. And have no problem with, you know, getting them to, you know, have sex with you. I was completely and utterly disgusted by this just listening to this story and hearing the emotion of the person in the video i mean i have listened to others where people have lost friends because they didn't think that toon critic was the way he was that they have seen him as and you know i'm not gonna just rant on all day but my thoughts towards toon critic as we stand he needs some serious fucking help he knew exactly what he was doing. This was no accident or anything like that. He knew exactly what he was doing. So, in my opinion, there's no forgiveness to be given. He needs some serious goddamn help and he needs to face his crimes. Which means he needs to be put away for his acts of pedophilia towards minors. I mean... What can I say about this guy except that he is a prick? He used women for sex and was completely, you know, rude to people. He's one of those people who thinks his fame makes him, you know, one of those people that you need specific, you know, terms in order to even talk to him as a person. Those are the people that I hate. Those people that think that just because they have uh, 14,000 subscribers, you can't talk to them if you have like, oh, 2,000 subscribers. So, in my opinion, the fact that he finds his fame more important than the feelings of a traumatized 14-year-old girl who was manipulated by him was abs- it makes for no forgiveness given. There's no forgiveness to be given, it has to be earned. And even then, I don't think I can even forgive him. I was never a fan of Toon Critic, and now I'm really glad I wasn't. I always saw something bad in him. Like, when I first saw his, uh, 
when I first saw his OC on an analysis video by, I think it was Lightning Bliss, I just saw something bad and now I can see my instincts were on point. Never did I think they would be this bad though. Never. <sighs> but guys, I don't want you to go in the description, or not the description, in the comment section and basically say, oh, I'm sorry, Sparrow. No, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to go and support the victims. Sure, the Wilstonator was hurt. Sure, Lightning Bliss was hurt. Sure, Dr. Wolf was hurt. But even they have stated in some of the videos, well, Dr. Wolf being out of the picture, uh, they have stated not to mourn over them, but to, you know, go and support the people who are traumatized and affected by this the most, which would be the victims of Toon Critic Y2K. They need help the most. They are traumatized by this. They are affected by this. And as my subscribers, I want you guys to go and support the victims of this. The real victims. The ones who are traumatized and completely and utterly affected by this. And it's going to take time for them to heal. Don't mourn over me. Don't mourn over, you know, the people like friend, the friends of, well, the older friends of Toon Critic. I want you guys to go and support the victims. Just type in YouTube Toon Critic Y2K and you'll find you'll find something. I guarantee you'll find something. And sorry about the phone ringing, but whatever. So that's all I literally can say about Toon Critic Y2K. He doesn't deserve forgiveness. He needs some serious fucking help. Big time. And to the victims of Toon Critic Y2K. My thoughts and my prayers go out to all of you, every single one of you who have been affected by this, to every single one of the victims of Toon Critic Y2K, I am sorry that he did this to you, and I hope and pray that you can get better and move on from some dickass like fucking Toon. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for watching. And hopefully you guys understand my true thoughts towards Toon Critic Y2K. I cannot forgive him, and I will never forgive him for what he has done. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.